Greetings, guys and gals. Welcome back here. Happy Friday to you. We made it. Another Finally Friday live trade room. Here's your recap video for 12-9, December 9th, 2011. Boy, what a great way to wrap up a week. Now, began our week, right? No news on Monday, very little news on Tuesday. We began the week kind of chomping around a little bit. But boy, Wednesday was great. Thursday was huge. And we came in this morning on a Friday morning, and we knew this morning was all about those windows of opportunity, right? Friday morning always is the same thing. Get in early, be patient, okay? No forcing trades, but make sure we watch the clock because late in the morning, we know that the same reason why you and I want to get out of the right up, up behind our desk on a Friday afternoon is the same reason why markets slow down. So people start hitting the exits late on a Friday morning, and we were aware of that today. So our plan this morning was to come in, be can right, be uh, be disciplined, be patient early in the morning, and then make sure we didn't over trade late in the morning because we knew those those traders be in the exit. Now we began on crude today, took some crude trades, some Russell trades, some Euro trades, Euro right in the middle, gold right in the middle. The two the two best moves we had this morning though were the crude and the Russell. Uh, made some made some trades on Russell late in the morning. You guys can take a look at the Russell trades on our track record posted below. But today I want to go over the crude because crude actually did some did some pretty easy things, some pretty easy clues on crude this morning. And let's review those three clues we got that allowed us to plan right through our morning prep. Remember, every morning at 7.30, we open up our trade room, we put together our entire morning prep, and we, of course, then put together our plan and follow the plan. So we devised our plan this morning, and then all we had to do was simply execute the plan this morning. Let's take a look. First clue we saw this morning, you can, you can probably already see it here, is going to be a price wedge. Now, there was a couple price wedges, right? There was a price wedge way up top here, all right, and also down bottom here, Right, so we had this big wide wedge. Okay, that one's pretty easy to find. And then of course we had to kind of zoom in a little bit to find this more narrow wedge. Alrighty. So we saw we had this narrow price wedge, which of course was inside of this big wide price wedge. So first clue was a price wedge. What does a price wedge tell me to do, guys? Price wedge says buy the lows, sell the highs, avoid the middle. Price wedge also tells me expect fake out breakouts. So if we go below the wedge, I'll look to buy support below it. If we go above the wedge, I'll look to sell resistance above the wedge. First clue, price wedge. Second clue, another pretty easy clue. Inside day. Now what do I mean by inside day? Well, grab your chart, mark your high from Thursday, yesterday. Mark your low from Thursday. We call that the previous highs and previous lows. That means this is your previous day's range. And how do we use this now? Well, ultimately, I need to know, are we above the range, are we within the range, or are we below the range from yesterday? And where are we? You got it. We are right, I would say, at the lower third right, of yesterday's range. So here we are this morning, first clue price wedge, second clue inside day. And an inside day tells me, Pretty much the same thing as a price wedge, right? Fade the breakouts, sell the highs, buy the lows. Inside day tells me, and you've heard me say this before, okay? Inside day tells me that the bias, the opinion of value has not changed from one day to the next. So the sellers on the crude yesterday didn't see value anything lower than 97.55, right? That's the low from Thursday. And we can also assume that the buyers didn't see any value higher than 101.73. So if we come back off those lows, we then expect price to go back up to retest the highs. If it was to keep going lower, we would then sell retracements, all right, below the previous low, because clearly, right, the bias, the opinion of value has changed. So we got the second clue was the inside day. And the third clue. Now the third clue took a little bit of searching. Now, first of all, if you zoom out here real quick, there's a big double top over here. And that big double top, mark up your low between it, that gives me now major support right there. So the double top, the major double top up there at 102.50, that told me to be looking to buy right there. All right? And I guess you could probably assume what happened next, right? Price will, will move higher. Well, that double top is a major one we found a minor double top here. See that? Made up the highs of the wedge. 
So we use our double top. And now remind me again, guys, what does a double top tell me? A double top tells me to buy at support. You can see some support levels down bottom here. Okay, we marked up some support down there. And of course, a double top also tells me to expect price to retest that top if the support below it holds. So we knew this morning that if price was to come down and tumble through that wedge low, we would buy and bring it right back up. Well, what happened this morning was it never made it that low. It made it down to the wedge low and failed, and we bought it back up anyways. So the third clue was the double top. So we got three easy clues on crude oil today. Friday morning, we knew we had to come in early, be patient, and get out early before the volume hit the exits. First clue we saw this morning was the price wedge. Now, the price wedge, again, we had a big wedge, right? That was pretty easy to find. But then also, we have a more narrow wedge. And the narrow wedge was really one of the biggest clues we got. Second clue was the inside day. Mark up your highs from Thursday, your lows from Thursday. There's your inside day right there. Where are we? We are inside the range above the lows, below the highs from Thursday. And then the third clue, had to search for this one. The third clue is called an advanced price structure. Members, you know what it is. If you're a guest in our trade room, log into your advanced course when you join as a member and you'll learn all about it. Again, big double tops up top. It gives me some major support right there. Small double top, right? Minor double top right here. Gives me major support right there. And so as you can see here, third clue, double top tells me what? You got it at support, buy support, and retest that double top high. So three clues this morning. These were used to put together our plan of attack. What do you think our plan was? You guessed it, right? Buy those lows, sell those highs of the wedge. All right? Buy those lows, sell those highs of the wedge. We also knew because of the inside day, if price was to break through the highs, we'd try to sell it. If price broke through the lows, we tried to buy it, right? Inside day, buy the lows, sell the highs. And then don't forget, that double top said, if we test some support, we're going back up to retest double top, right? Double top was the big clue. And we knew because of that, if we tested support and it held, we'd go all the way back up and hit that double top high again. And that's exactly what happened. Now, this morning was actually pretty interesting because what we saw this morning was 8.45 this morning. Well, let me back up real quick. At 7.30 a.m. today, we talked about fading the reaction, right? Remember this morning? At 7.30, 7.45, we're talking about the scenario this morning. And we said, all right, we've supposedly got this solution in Europe, right? There was some news chatter overnight about, about the ECB supposedly right, figuring this whole mess out during this, uh, uh, the ECB leadership summit. Well, this morning, we knew that when the U.S. session opened up, right, when all of us all of us, uh, people, all of us, in the U.S. When we woke up Eastern Time, we too would be hearing reaction to that report, and so we assume we'd probably get some ECB comments, some White House comments, some Fed comments. Heck, we may see Obama jump on the microphone. And our exact plan was: don't just jump into these trades, guys, after you see the reaction to it, because remember. The best way to trade a reaction is to fade the reaction. So we knew that if we had, for example, all right, let's say some random Fed speaker makes a comment at 9.45 this morning about the ECB announcement. The market has already priced this stuff in by now. All the smart money, they're sitting on the sidelines by now. Well, you're going to get a bunch of rookies and retail traders that will, of course, react to that reaction. It always comes right back up or right back down. So first thing this morning, 8.45, we got that, right? Another ECB statement came out. And so, of course, what happened, right? Dollar jumped. Crude dropped. And when it dropped, we bought the crude. So we got a little reaction trade at the lows this morning. We bought it. We took a wave pattern short down to retest the lows. We then bought the lows and took it all the way back to the highs. An excellent job today, guys. Really hats off to members this morning. Auto Trader making money, Fast Tracks making money, and of course, made a killing here today on this very simple price structure here on crude. As you can see right here, a couple things real quick here. You've got your wedge lows right there, right? There's your wedge pattern, if you recall. We had a very narrow wedge. There was a much bigger wedge, but that was the uh, narrow wedge. 
And of course, we've got a double top top there. You can't see the other double top. The other double top is, of course, off the screen over here. And you got your right your wedge, your wedge highs, your wedge lows, your opens right in the middle. And again, don't forget, 8:45 or so, we had that ECB statement that came out. Also, too, lower left-hand corner here, you'll notice I have a little four-range chart. I wanted to give you guys a heads up on how I took the trade there at 9 o'clock. That's a four-range chart. All righty, so now you know where we are here on this chart. This is a much faster time frame now, right, guys? This is a 13-range chart. And a 13-range chart, perfect for day traders. You'll notice we're going to begin our day here, 7 a.m. Here we are at the top of that wedge. All right, by 8.15, 8.30, we had international trade at 8.30. And after 8.30, if you recall, we got that ECB statement. And I, I can't recall what the exact statement was. I'm a day trader. I really don't care what the statement was. All I care about is what the reaction was. So price dropped. But in all reality, what happened, though, is, is the dollar came off right the lows and started to rise higher. Well, knowing that we were looking for that fade the news, fade the reaction, we already knew this market had baked it all in. And so when the price dropped on crude, we waited for it to stabilize, and then we faded the news right and brought it back up. Now you can see over here what actually happened. This is the four range chart. We came down, right? Swing high, swing high. We break it, right? And that's, of course, how we got into that trade long. So I didn't just guess at 9 o'clock. I used this four range chart, okay, to get my entry in there. Well, of course, then that sets up nicely here for a wave pattern short. Okay, remember, we're going from top to bottom. We're expecting now this to go from top to bottom here. So we go down. I buy, of course, fade the news, bring it up into a picture perfect wave pattern short. We take the wave pattern short, expecting now to test these lows of this wedge. 45 ticks later, we made 31 ticks buying, fading the news, follow the plan. We made, at 9.02 here, another 45 ticks, right? That's a, that total, what, 76 ticks? So 76 ticks in the first trade, guys, that's 760 USD before 9.05 this morning. Pretty great way to begin your Friday morning. And again, we follow the plan. Very easy, very easy. Next up. We buy, we sell, we're now down to the lows. Now, what's our plan going to be at the lows? You got it. Buy those lows. It's support. Momentum is oversold, lines up perfectly. I take one trade long, plus five, minus five. The second trade long, that was the winner, plus 38. And then you can see here, we go up, two-step pattern long, again, at 931 now for 20 more ticks. So follow the bouncing ball here, guys. I'm using a faster time frame to enter the first trade here. I go down and I test the wedge low. Now remember, we had been waiting for this. This was the highest percentage trade we had the whole morning, was to buy these lows. Little bit sloppy at the low, because if you recall, remember what happened this morning? While the crew was falling to the lows, the dollar was still rising. But the dollar had a little bit more room before it hit the resistance. Remember that? So we talked about this this morning, and we said, all right, if the dollar keeps going higher, even though the crude is at the lows of the wedge, we may have to take a sloppy trade on this one first. We may have to take a couple swings at this before we get the, you know, the one to rise. Again, we were at the lows on crude, but not quite at the highs on the dollar. And we talked about that in detail this morning. So I took my first trade. My first trade gives me plus five and then bounced me out. Again, dollar was still rising. Well, then once the dollar found itself up to the highs, the resistance, now all of a sudden it, it, it took off. Right? So first trade was plus five, minus five. Second trade was a plus 38 ticks. Right? That's a plus five, plus 10, plus 18. And then, of course, we go up. Wave one at 930, not going to take it. But by 931, I will take that two-step pattern long. Remember, I'm not going to trade between 915 and 930, okay, around the U.S. Open. So at this point now, we got 70, 75 ticks in the first two trades, right? An extra, what, 58 ticks here. We have over 130 ticks now, guys. That's 1300 bucks just on crude alone. And it's only 930. An incredible Friday. Now remember, the most important news in the morning was now supposed to be at 10 o'clock. We had consumer sentiment. And it was interesting because consumer sentiment came out bullish. It came out higher than expected. And what is a higher consumer sentiment reading going to tell for crude? Well, remember, right now what's happening is what's good for the recovery is good for demand on crude. What's good for demand is good for rising prices on crude. So we were, we were, we were really interested right away here. We got what appeared to be crude bullish news. So what I did was 
I bought a pullback above the above that swing high right here. Got a plus five. Took ten ten ticks out of the out of the out of the market and then moved the stop up to the point of entry and it bounced me out for a plus one or something like that. So plus five plus one. I'm sorry, excuse me, it's a plus five minus four. A plus five minus four. It was two times five, two times minus eight. It's a plus two. So we're trying to buy above that swing high there in 98, 40 or so. Again, knowing that that news was bullish and also knowing that it should retest, again, that double top. Now you can see it later on did retest double top, but I, of course, wasn't in the trade still. So that was the only trade today that really disappointed us. Didn't get much more out of it than that. But as you can see, though, over 130 ticks on crude alone today, guys. Not a bad way. Not a bad way to finish up our week here. We begin our day up at the highs of the wedge. We come down off the highs. The ECB statement tells me to buy the right buy support here, fade the news into a wave pattern short. At the lows, two-step pattern long, nothing in, nothing out. Two-step pattern long, 38 more ticks, and then of course can't take the wave pattern long because of the open. Two-step pattern long, breaker pattern long, 20 more ticks. We then go up. News comes out bullish. I try to buy the pullback. It doesn't go anywhere, and it goes anyways, but later on in the morning. All right, excellent Friday morning, and by 11 o'clock this morning, we were sitting on hands as, of course, crew started to jump, Russell started to jump, and remember, guys, we called in the room this morning. We said, we're going to go retest that level on the Russell today, and we definitely did. We went all the way back up on the Russell and the crew to retest those double top highs. Incredible how well this method works. Now, let's count our money up here first, and we'll talk about what's happening next week here. Had a great day today, obviously. I had a great week, a fantastic day, fantastic week. Don't forget, if you want a full copy of our you know, multi-year track record, email sales at School of Trade. I also posted all these trades here right below the video that you guys can look and see where they were. We began on crude, right? Got a great start today, 30 ticks, 45 ticks. Tried to buy the lows, 38 ticks, right? Buy the lows, 20 ticks. And, of course, after the news there at 10.05, 2 ticks. Now, the Russell was an interesting situation here because the Russell broke above its wedge. We tried to go wave pattern long. It tore my head off. And when it, and when it did, we made most of the money back, as you can see. Right? Of course, tried to buy above the wedge highs in the Russell, if you guys recall this morning, knowing the Russell would go up to that double top. Well, it ended up going to the double top, but not have taken some money back from me. I made the money back, though, of course, selling the failure afterwards. And then again... By about 10.45, 11 o'clock this morning, things are really slowing down. We had one fast track trade today, guys. One fast track. All it gave us was 10 ticks. Now, like I always say, if the fast track will give me 20 ticks, I'll go for 20. But obviously, it gave me 10 this morning, and that's all we got today. All right? We can't force those fast track trades because, remember, the fast track trades are supposed to be the higher percentage trades, the ones that are perfect with those easy entries, stops, and targets. Let's prep for, for next week. We are done for the year. Our, our live trade room closed now as of Friday until January 9th. Okay, so we got a nice extended break from the trade room, but there's a couple reasons why we're doing that. First of all, I'm going to be developing new automated systems this break, so we'll be releasing new auto traders to our members. We also have a brand new team starting right now. We've got more member support. We've got more trade plan support. In fact, one of the coolest things we're doing in 2012 is we're adding a new trade plan support team. And that means you're going to come in, join as a member. I'm going to give you a custom trade plan because you're going to tell me, well, you're going to answer some questions for me that I'm going to give you a custom trade plan. And then we have a full team now starting that's going to help you to trade that trade plan. All right, now, why do we provide all the support? Why do we do all this extra work for our members? Because it's a win-win scenario. When my members do well, they help other members. And when they do well, it helps everybody else. So it's in my best interest, right, to have your best interest in mind at all times, right? Pretty good relationship, right? A little bit better than those teachers you pay at Harvard, right? They don't care if you graduate or not. I care if you guys make money every day because when you make money, I make money. When you do well, I do well. And of course, Starting in 2012, brand new auto traders, brand new uh, membership support team, helping that trade room and helping our trading plan support. As always, our full-time tech support comes with membership, our auto traders with membership, indicators, workspaces, templates, data, charts, everything's included, guys. Don't take my word for it. Give a shout to sales at School of Trade. Ask them for information about how you can start using the auto trader next week in December. And remember, guys, the rest of the break... 
sales teams open, support teams open. Okay? Our corporate office is not going anywhere. We will still be here, but we've got some important things to do for the rest of the year to make sure that 2012 kicks off with a bang. New strategies, a couple new indicators developing, guys, and again, training our new team. Now, this will not be the last time you hear of me before 2012, and it better not be the last time you hear from you guys. So shoot me an email, jj at School of Trade, or sales at School of Trade if you're a guest, or support at School of Trade if you want to use the concierge service to set up all your auto traders. But again, don't be afraid, guys. Post your questions on the blog. Email us. We'll be on Skype. We'll be here working hard along the way. And we'll be right back here January 9th to reopen our live trade room where we've earned over $450,000 this year on four contracts calling trades live in the room. What a great year. What a great year. I can't thank everybody enough for making 2011 an incredible year. We're not done yet, though. We're not done yet. And again, I better not. this better not be the last time I hear from you, and this will definitely not be the last time I hear from me before 2012. So we'll see you guys on the blog, on our Facebook, right, on our YouTube pages. Don't forget to keep in touch, ask lots of questions, and we'll see you guys here back in the trade room January 9th. But remember, I'll be right at my desk Monday morning looking to help you guys out. Get in touch, keep in touch, ask lots of questions. Adios, amigos. Happy New Year. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas to everybody. And we'll see you guys on the flip side. Bye-bye for now.